Ismail, just, just to highlight that customer understanding and insights is not something you do once and then you keep that and you shelf it. And it's, it's not, it's a living uh, exercise that you have to continue doing. Everybody's working from home. Um, we can no longer print documents and send them to customers. And the only reason really that we've still been printing and posting policy documents to customers is because we've never really taken that last step of saying, look, we know customers want everything to be on their mobile phone. We want them on email, we want on chat, but we're really uncomfortable about stopping printing because we've always done it that way. And so I think the, the COVID and so many of our teams suddenly having to be working from home, not being physically unable to, to do some of those things that's really forced people out of their comfort zone and it's accelerated some of the digitization. Okay, so often we focus ourselves in wanting to tell the customer, this is the type of experience that I would like that you have. Okay, and obviously it's very good to have this vision and to have this very clear um, customer centric strategy. But I think there is sometimes that we need to be very humble and we need to be flexible to adapt this strategy. And I think the most important word is actively listen to the customer. Uh, change their strategy and decided to, to be closer to their customers, open their own stores, and to build the whole uh, community around running and sports and so on. And uh, the, the outcome is that they have now a more, uh, I mean, big connected um, customer database as well as the community. And at the end, if the two parties are B2B or B2C, it's not really relevant because at the end, it's always human to human. Therefore, I, when we are speaking about, uh, about uh, business, it's not um, about B2B or B2C but it's about having a relationship between one human to, the, to another human. If you're selling fish and that needs to be shipped from Norway to Singapore, it's a very, very different product and a different customer you are than if you're a mining company that needs to ship gold from a, a mine in an off-site location to your other location on the other side of the island you're on. It's a very different type of experience. And therefore, for us as a company, the service we need to provide for the two will be very, very different. Um, and that's what you can pick up when you look at these 360 degree patterns on how they behave with us. And you uh, employ something like machine learning uh, to basically mine some of these patterns and help us look at, okay, these customers behave similarly. These customers behave similarly. Most organizations, right, uh, departments, we, we are organized by silos and then we sometimes we call verticals. But there's a famous saying that I heard from and I often use it, we use it again, is that uh, we organize ourselves vertically in the organization, but customers see us horizontally as one. So and it is a very basic fact, we all know that. But sometimes we just realize that uh, when we as customers, we just kind of imagine that we've been treated by or we've, we've been given feedback by the our the vendors to us saying that, oh, I'm sorry, this is not my department, that's the other department, and this is almost like not my problem. But as customers, we don't really care because if we have a, we associate with a brand, we buy a brand, we want to have a holistic, we expect that, right? This is uh, almost fundamental, like what uh, just now mentioned, what she has mentioned. Uh, you have to make sure that your uh, voice of customer program reaches as far as possible and is uh, at the same time as deep as, uh, as deep as possible. So uh, there are different ways to achieve this uh, width and this depth at the same time. So we obviously do the relationship measurements using, using agencies like uh, Kantar, etc. We obviously have uh, the feedback management platforms uh, uh, such as Pisano in place. 